Okay, so we're gonna be doing the yeast raised doughs today. And again, I, I provided you guys with the recipe packet here. Um, so uh, there's many, many different types of yeast raised doughs. We're gonna be talking about two different kinds today. And one is the lean dough and the other one is the rich dough. We're actually gonna be demonstrating the lean dough. All right, very, very simple. You're gonna have water, you're gonna have flour, you're gonna have yeast, you're gonna have salt, you can add some sugar if you want. But those four ingredients basically are all the ingredients you need. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn my water on so that it gets nice and warm. I'm also going to preheat my oven to as hot as I possibly can. I'm gonna get my oven up to as hot as I possibly can. Lean doughs that we're gonna be making today, um, that straight dough mixing method, don't lean doughs, we wanna get it as hot as possible. Think brick oven, right, brick oven. So. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have my measuring cup. My recipe is calling for 18 ounces of, of uh, warm water. Remember the, remember we read the chapter and we talked about it in the PowerPoint presentation, how the water should be warm. Why? It's gonna activate that yeast. That yeast needs six things to grow. Remember the fat Tom from the 112 class, right? So food, proper levels of acidity, time, temperature, oxygen, and moisture, right? So food is gonna be the flour, right? The simple, uh, carbohydrates, it could be sugar if you had sugar in your recipe as well. So food, proper levels of acidity. You wanna make sure that your bread dough is gonna be right in the middle of the pH scale. You don't wanna add things like uh, zests of lemon or anything, it's gonna make that dough take a very, very long time to proof if, if you're more on the acidic side, right? So you wanna be, so food, proper levels of acidity, time and temperature, right? So temperature, we're gonna help it out with a little bit of water. And then time, what I've done is I've made multiple batches of the dough today so that I, when I'm doing the demo, I can actually create the bread from start to finish without having those hour gaps of, of time for proofing, right? So food, proper levels of acidity, time, temperature, oxygen, oxygen, right? So when, when I store my yeast, I store it into an airtight container so it doesn't have a lot of oxygen in there. It's dry, it doesn't have the moisture, which is the last thing, food, proper levels of acidity, time, temperature, oxygen, and moisture, right? So here's my moisture. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, my water. I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna measure out 18 ounces of the water here. And uh, just sit tight if you can't see me in the other video. All right, so I have it, It's it, the temperature is, right about body temperature is great, but again, so it should go from around 95 degrees to about 105 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And uh, do, is it like meticulous that I have to measure it with a, with a, with a thermometer? No, throughout my entire career, never measured it. Just make sure that it's not too hot. Stick your finger in it. If it's hot, too hot, it's gonna kill your yeast. If it's too cold, it's gonna take a really long time to activate, right? So my recipe is calling for one tablespoon of active dry yeast. Okay, there's multiple different types of dry yeast. Uh, you have um, the instant yeast, which is just literally active dry yeast that's been pulverized to a finer, a finer powder. Um, that has more exposure to the surface area of the yeast. Um, I'm also gonna add a little bit of salt, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, my flour first. So I have my bread flour, and uh, so I have my bread flour here. I have, um, this is a sifter, which we're gonna be using later. So but what we wanna do is you wanna, um, I'm gonna um, show you how we're gonna use the, the scoop, right? So you wanna fluff, and then scoop, and then swoop. You don't wanna pack it, right? And uh, I've measured out six cups already. You can weigh it out too, you can scale it out if you want. The recipe I have for you guys is actually utilizing cups because at home most of you have measuring cups not a lot of you have uh digital scales or whatever so i'm going to go ahead and add that right so i added the water i added the yeast now i'm going to go ahead and crank this up i have my dough hook attachment in there i'm going to go ahead and add my salt as well the recipe is calling for salt right you can actually add some sugar as well too now the recipe that i'm that, that, I, that i have in your packet there only has uh, just salt in there, it doesn't have any sugar, but uh, for the interest of time and knowing that the uh, yeast will activate faster with a little bit of sugar and also to add a little bit of flavor to the dough, I'm gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon of uh, sugar, right? So you get just granulated sugar in there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna literally turn this on, all right? When I turn it on, it's gonna go ahead and mix. Now, if you don't have a mixer at home, what you can do is you can actually just use your hand. Again, red doughs go back all the way to, um, you know, centuries ago, right? When, when um, before they had refrigeration, before they had electricity, they were making bread doughs, right? So, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and just allow this to just mix up. And it only 
takes a couple of minutes to mix up. All right. In the meantime, I'm going to get a bowl ready. I have a, uh, a, a stainless steel bowl. I'm going to go ahead and spray it. You can just rub it with a little bit of oil if you wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and spray it. Okay. And I'm, I'm allowing my dough to just mix up. Almost finished. All right, so now I have my dough mixed up. And again, if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer or a stand-up mixer or whatever, just go ahead and use your hands to do it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spread a little bit of flour on the table so I don't stick to the table. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna knead it. So you wanna use that portion of your hand, that kind of a, uh, the, the, you know, the spongy portion of your palm and, and, and fold and, and knead, fold and knead. And what you're doing is you're working the moisture and the salt and the yeast so that you evenly distribute all of the ingredients. Now, this one here is a very dry dough. Uh, dry doughs, like, um, the, the rule is this. Remember the rule from our lecture? Remember the rule? The wetter the dough, the larger the holes, right? So my sourdough recipe is very, very moist. My ciabatta recipe is very, very moist, right? And it has a lot of water in it, right? But this is the French baguette. Think about the French baguette. You wanna make long, thin, thin loaves, um, you want to be able to um, um, put some um, cream cheese on there and your smoked salmon for your canapes and things like that, right? So, so think about it. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just knead this together until it all comes into a ball like this. Now, many of the, uh, your, your chefs will actually do something to make sure, to find out whether or not it has been kneaded enough. So if that's the case, you can just take some of your dough and you can find out whether or not that gluten has been established by now. And what you can do is you can take some of the dough and you can just go ahead and start to stretch it a little bit. It's called the window pane test. So I can see that it needs to be a little bit more kneaded. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to knead the dough to make sure that I have the gluten established, right? So there we go. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this dough and I'm going to put it into the bowl here. You can go ahead and cover it with a towel at this point like this, um, and or you can cover it, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with some plastic wrap. All right, so we'll just cover it with plastic wrap. Now, what's gonna happen with this dough is it's going to proof, it's gonna proof, proof, right? So proof, proofing means to, to allow the yeast to eat the simple carbohydrates that are found in the flour and in the sugar, and it's gonna take in oxygen and give alcohol and carbon dioxide. Alcohol and carbon dioxide are gonna form little pockets of gas in the bread itself, and it's going to proof up. It's gonna, all right, each one of those pockets of air is going, on a microscopic level, is going to rise, and the whole loaf is going to rise, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I've gone ahead and done that ahead of time. So now this one was done about an hour ago, and you can see the difference. This is exactly the same recipe as I just demonstrated. You can see at, at, that it has doubled in size, right? You can see that there's large gaps of air in there. What is that air? That air is the alcohol and carbon dioxide, which is gonna give it some flavor, right? So I'll, I'll go ahead and take that, and I'm gonna continue working with this now, right? So at home, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to wait, put it into a warm place, not too hot, not too cold, um, you want it to be uh, right about 95% um, humidity, about 85 to 95 degrees. You can go actually all the way to 105 or so as far as the temperature of a proofer. Uh, again, warm uh, environment like summertime here in Southern California, you can leave it right out on your counter, right? I, that's what I did. I left it right out on my counter. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spread out some of my flour. And I'm just going to gently, everybody say gently, gently move it onto my table, right? I'm not gonna manipulate the dough at this point because I have relaxed gluten strands, right? They're, they're kind of relaxed. If I can see and use my arms as um, illustration here, you can see that my arms, perhaps, if you use your imagination, you can see my arms are gluten strands, right? If I went ahead and started manipulating this, it would go ahead and connect them again or, or, or mix them up like this again, right? So what I wanna do is I want them to stay relaxed like this, all right? And so I'm gonna very, very gently manipulate the dough, right? Not manipulate the dough, and very, very gently cut the dough into four equal pieces, right? 
and I'm gonna make three lobes and then I'm gonna show you some other shapes as well right so this one here is uh, there's one loaf two lobes I want them to be equal in size because I want them to bake evenly right so at this point again notice how I'm not manipulating the dough at this point right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flatten it out and I'm going as I'm flattening it out I'm going to just kind of push out that alcohol and carbon dioxide and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to shape it into a loaf when I start to shape it into a loaf I'm going to reach over the top and I'm just going to tuck over the top and 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 tuck and I'm just going to continue to tuck stretching the gluten strands from the outside and tucking them in stretch and then I can move it a little bit longer what I want is a tapered long loaf right a tapered long loaf like that see that so I go ahead and do that right and I'm going to go ahead and pinch my loaf like this pinch 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 now I've pinched now I have a seam on across the entire loaf of bread there right so the dough and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it right I want to make sure that I roll it out in such a way as to where it is even right nice and even see that how even that is all right so I'll set that aside I'll do it again one more time all right do it again one more time I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck keep tucking I want you guys to, to practice this technique uh, you should be able to get four loaves if you want to do it like that and I'm gonna show you two other techniques you can make a boule which is a round bread ball and you can actually hollow that out after you baked it you can actually hollow that out and store your uh, put your soup in there and present your soup uh, like we do at school and such for like corn chowder or clam chowder or whatever right people love to come into your restaurant and have a beautiful hollowed out uh, bread bowl right so again I've, I've gone ahead and tucked it over now I'm gonna go ahead and pinch 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 tuck and pinch tuck and pinch so that that seam does not open up later on see that is super important the seam you don't want that seam to open up later on right so you can actually make multiple uh, at this point you can go ahead and braid them if you wanted to or whatever right so okay so I have two loaves here I'm going to take those two loaves I'm gonna put them onto a tray right so I have a sheet tray here all right and um, maybe a little bit too small I'll use this one So this one uh, just came out of the oven, it's a little bit warm, it's going to be fine, right? And I want to go ahead and just uh, spread it out a little bit. Alright, I'm going to put the loaves, lay them out straight on here. Okay, it has a little flour on there um, from the, the other loaves that went in the oven, right? Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to shape it even further now, right? What I want to do is I want to uh, take some scissor and I want to create what's called an epis, epis. Everybody say that, it means little piece in French, right? So I'm actually going to take my scissor and if you look at it, the relationship to the tray, it is actually at 90 degrees right now. Half of that would be 45, half of that would be about 22 and a half. That's where you want to keep the angle of the scissors. Number one mistake my students make is that they create the wrong angle on the scissor and then you don't have a beautiful epis, all right? You're gonna go nine tenths of the way through and you're gonna snip, literally snip one inch hunks of dough. And as you do it, you're gonna push it from one side to the other, to the other, like that. So you have beautiful uh, shaped lobe like that, right? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some, uh, I have a little bit of, uh, I have a lot of water and a little bit of egg um, if you are doing a rich dough, with the rich doughs, as we talked about in the lecture, contain things like eggs and butter and or milk, rich ingredients, right? Um, at that point, you could probably put some milk in here, right? What I'm doing is just almost basically a water wash. I have a little bit of egg and a lot of water in there, right? I'm just going to go ahead and coat that on the outside. That will enable my crust to form on the outside of the bread. Everyone likes a beautiful crunchy crust on the outside of their bread dough, right? After, you, after it comes out of the oven, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just brush that on there liberally, right? And I will make, it'll make it wet and sticky, 
on the outside. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle it with some flour. And again, all this is done for decorative purposes only, right? For decorative purposes only. But everyone likes uh, nice, decorative, beautiful bread, right? Everyone is very impressed by that. So then you can go ahead and sprinkle some flour on top, just like this, okay? Go ahead and uh, let, let it snow a little bit on there. Almost summertime here in Southern California and we're snowing. All right, okay, so we'll go ahead and sprinkle that liberally with the flour. Then the very last thing I'm gonna do with my baguette is I'm actually going to score the baguette. All right, and, the, and again, it's the only reason why that's done is for decorative purposes only. All right, that is a question on your quiz. Why do you score the outside of your, your baguette? It's for decorative purposes only. As this proofs, it's going to open up. You're going to see the flour. The flour, as, as you bake it, it's going to uh, become, all right? So what I've done is I actually have some done already. So you have this little, what I'm going to do is allow that to proof. And then literally through the magic of television, you can see how this has already been done. I did this before I started the, the filming, right? So before I started the Zoom meeting, and you can see how I have some beautiful loaves. Now you can see how they've proofed up and doubled in size, right? Now I have the oven preheated. I'm gonna go ahead and bake those in the oven. Again, I want it to be as hot as it possibly can for lean dough. Rich doughs that contain, again, what are the rich dough contain? A rich dough contains things like eggs, sugar, um, milk, right? Stuff like that. So rich doughs, lower temperature oven, maybe 350, 400 max and it's gonna cook less time, it's gonna become golden brown, but it is also gonna be an internal temperature of about 185, right? The lean doughs, like this one, we want the oven to be as hot as you possibly can, 500 degrees, 600 degrees, think brick oven, right? Think um, you load up the coal in the oven and really, really make that oven as hot as it possibly can be, right? And then fire that in the oven so you get this thick, crisp crust on the outside. Uh, let's talk a little bit about steam in the oven. So you can have an oven that has a steam injection in the oven. Um, you can actually do that by putting a sheet tray in the bottom or on the floor of your oven. And then halfway through the cooking process, just take some boiling water, pour it onto that sheet tray, and then shut the oven really fast. That will cause steam to generate inside the oven. A steam generated uh, oven uh, creates a beautiful, thick, crisp, chewy crust on the outside of your lean doughs, which are which is really really fantastic what i'd like to do also is i'd like to show you another technique and that is the bread rolls right i had some of you some of the students were asking about creating bread rolls so i'm going to go ahead and just take this dough and one of these and i'm just going to cut them into four equal pieces right four equal pieces so i have my four equal pieces what i'm going to do is i'm actually you can actually stretch it over like this like make like a beggar's purse almost right with the dough and then you can take that top of the beggar's purse and put it down and then with your palm and with your fingers you're rolling the dough rolling the dough like that you see that um you get good at it you can actually do it with two hands you know uh professional bakers you, if you have two hands do use both hands right and what happens is you end up having a beautiful round bread roll right and again you want to let that proof again double in size again before you put it back into the oven right Another one that you can do that's really fun is you can take the dough and roll it, all right? And once you roll it out, you can go ahead and, and tie it, right? So I'm gonna tie it with one knot, and then again, through, and that will enable you to have a beautiful knot, right? So you can have a knot like that. See, isn't that wonderful? You can see the knots there. Okay, so one more, one more knot just to show you, okay? Why not, right? Why not, okay? All right, <laughs> trying to be funny. All right, so again, once, just like a regular granny knot, and then twice, and then have that little nipple stick up through there, and then it looks beautiful, right? Again, you can egg wash these, a little bit of water wash, uh, a little bit of flour on top, you can put seeds on top, you can put uh, things like sesame seeds, poppy seeds, uh, you can put a uh, everything mix, like a bagel everything mix if you wanted to, all right? So a lot, lots of different things that you can do there as far as it goes. Um, you could also, I'll, I'll show you a real quick braid. So if you take this, you can actually um, cut it into thirds, like this, thirds. All right, and when I learned the six braid, I'm gonna show you the six braid. When I learned the six braid, it was, it was done with challah, which was a, a very Jewish bread, right, for, right? And what we did was we created six long, equal, tapered loaves, right? So 
six, six long, even tapered loaves, about maybe about six inches long, six to eight inches long, right? Again, one, two, three, try to go fast, three, four, move out of the way here, four, five. When I learned this, it was kind of difficult to understand because um, I, I, I was realizing that when you did the six braid, there was a specific technique that had to be followed in order to be able to have it as a beautiful loaf, right? So again, you have six. And I remember um, looking at the technique and learning, oh, uh, well, it has to be one over three and then three over five and then five over eight. And I thought, wow, that's really hard. But I, and then I thought, well, maybe I'm, I'm a more of an animated guy, right? So I thought maybe I can make octopus man, right? So I have four legs and two arms. And then you only have to remember one rule, and that is arm in the middle, replace the arm with the leg that's furthest away. So arm in the middle, and then replace that arm immediately with the leg that's furthest away. Now I have a new middle, and then I put the other arm in the middle, replace the arm with the leg that's furthest away. Arm in the middle, replace the arm with the leg that's furthest away. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just continue my dough. And I'm making a, six, a beautiful six braid here. So again, you're an artist and you are a scientist if you're working the in the bakery, right? Artist and scientist if you're working in the bakery. So if you're an artist and a scientist, you gotta be able to create a beautiful round or beautiful, right? Or beautiful uh, six braid or knot or tapered loaf baguette, epis, all the different shapes you're gonna be learning, right? So again, those are a few of them just to get started. And so we have the six braid, you can see the six braid. We have the, the round bread rolls. We have the knots. We have the baguettes. We have the epis. And uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and, and, uh, and baked some of these loaves off. So you can actually see what they look like all done. And so you can see how how this looks beautiful, golden brown. I in, the internal temperature on this bread was about 200 degrees. Again, the lean doughs are 200 degrees or more. And again, it should be golden brown. What if it's 200 degrees internal, but it's not golden brown yet? You can leave it in, leave it in. Turn the oven up a little bit, right? So what if it's golden brown already, but it's not 200 in it? Turn the oven down a little bit, you see? You control the baking technique. You control the technique, right? So we have a beautiful bread roll. Um, you can go ahead and break some butter out, uh, some honey butter or whatever, and you can eat and enjoy your bread. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoy making bread this week. Um, the It's going to be done by both the 111 and the 121 class this week. So great job, guys. Give yourself